MikeAsardatHome.com and today, at the request of Andrew, a friend of the webpage, we're making some bagels. He's having issues making large amounts of bagels with his Encarsim or Electrolux Assistant Mixer. I've not had trouble, he's asked questions, so we're doing a video. Um, we're making 31 bagels, and the reason for 31 instead of the more reasonable 36 is 31 is about as many as I want to put in the mixer without overloading it. Bagels are a mixer killer. Uh, you really need to be careful about the maximum load of your mixer. If you have a mixer like a KitchenAid that tells you how many cups of flour you can use, cut it in half when you make bagels because bagels are lethal, heavy, hard to make. Where's my apron? No, no, no. There's my apron. What I normally like to do is Put the liquids in the mixer first, and I'll normally weigh them directly on a scale. So I'll put this mixing bowl on a scale and go from there. However, in the interest of getting the tedious mixing and measuring stuff out of the way and getting us as quickly as we can to the extremely boring mixing part, I thought I'd pre-measure. Watching a mixer mix is about as boring as watching paint dry. Anyway. What I'd like to do first is put in the oil, if any. I think this is about 48 grams. I'd like to put that in first so if I mismeasure on the scales, I can pull it back out. Next I'll put in the sourdough starter or other pre-ferments. This is, I think, 240 grams. The measurements will be in the notes for the video. If you're seeing this on YouTube, you should probably go to sourdoughhome.com, Big Bagels. Again, I'd like to put this in next. Mmm, yummy. You should try eating your starter sometime. Next, I'd like to put the water in. The sourdough starter is again in for the same reason as the oil. If I put too much in, I can scoop some out. Now goes the water, 1,320 grams. Next, we're going to put in the flour, 2730 grams, if I remember correctly. The numbers will be in the show notes. The flour we're using today is General Mills Altrops. I like Altrops. West of the Mississippi, you can get it in an unbleached and unbromated form, which is what I prefer. If I can't find that, I'll get uh, King Arthur's Lancelot. Honey little grains, imperial flour. Some people had luck with um, Boxer from Bay State Milling. I haven't used it, but some folks have had luck with it. As you can see, our mixing bowl is getting a little bit full. Now that I can pour it safely, I'll pour the rest in. When I'm measuring directly into the measuring bowl with weights. I like to put a little crater in the top of the flour and pour the salt in there, which is 64 grams. So if I put too much in, I can pull it back out. If I were to just pour it on top of the top, on top of the top of the flour, it would just roll down the sides and I could recover it. And the last thing is our malt extract. We're using a dry malt extract. And you don't want to let dry malt extract remain in the air very long. It absorbs moisture, very hydro hygroscopic, and it turns into a little brick. I keep it in an airtight bag and in the freezer and try to keep it out in open air as little time as possible. We're going to be using the hook. The Electrolux mixer comes with a hook and a ruler. When I bought my Electrolux mixer, Giselle Paul at uh, Mountain Tops Milling, which is sadly no more, told me, don't worry about the roller, just use the hook. Just forget you've got the roller. I don't know why they packed the roller. So it goes in here. Then we 
move this over and latch it in. For the sake of the video, I've got the mixer facing you. Normally it faces me and everything works better because that's the way I'm used to working. Okay. All that done. I like gentle mixing. So, I turn the mixer to its lowest speed, which is when this knob is at 12 o'clock. You can speed it up by turning it this way. I wish they had numbers on here or a better indication. This is one of my pet peeves about this mixer, and I have to say every mixer I've ever used has its pet peeves. There are indications on here as to what the speed is. Here you got two, and here you got three, so you can tell it's faster, but it's not really terribly meaningful. I would feel a greater level of comfort if it said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One of the things I like about this mixer is it has a timer. This mixer is very nice in that it stays put when you turn it on. It doesn't go wobbling across the table trying to crash onto the floor like some other mixers. So I just set the timer for five minutes and typically walk away. I'm not going to this time because um, that's a lot of flour in there. So what I'll do is actually set the timer, uh, kitchen timer, for 10 minutes and just walk away. But we're not going to do that this time. Okay. This is a lot of flour and it wants to climb out of the mixer and that's okay. I will find the flour and put it back in. Except the stuff that hit the floor, which our little dog will find. It's turning into dough of sorts pretty quickly. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes the dough will be ejected with this large an amount. This is, like I said, as much as I like to make. I've made more. And it was a problem. This is about as far as I want to go. A little problem, but not too much. If you hear the motor straining, right now I'm hearing the motor strain a bit, you can kick up the speed a little bit. If the dough doesn't want to come together, I'll put the scraper in to help scrape the dough together. But this is coming together pretty well. I haven't used these words, but this is pretty much a worst case scenario for this mixer with the amount of dough we're making. It's going to get more and more under control as the mixer grinds through. On a more reasonable basis, I'd probably make a maximum load about two dozen, which is a lot of bagels. One of the things to consider the things to consider is tolerance, dough tolerance. When a baker talks about tolerance, they mean how long can a fully risen dough be held before it declines in quality. For many doughs, that's about an hour. So if you've got a 40 minute bake and four bakes to go, you can't do all the bread at once. You need to do it in several stages. Bagels have a lot of tolerance and about a 15 minute bake. So even if you've got four or five bakes, you'll be okay. As you can see, the dough is getting smaller, it's compressing, it's still working. There is some dough up at the top here, which we'll move. 
and so it'll try and its doughy buddies and be worked. Okay, the dough has been sitting for five minutes. I like to let the dough rest for about five minutes after the initial mix. It lets the moisture equalize in the dough and all the flour become hydrated. Over the years I've found if I don't give the dough a rest, I have to mix the dough longer than if I do give it a rest. So it's been resting. Okay, now because this is a thick dough, we'll probably need to, we'll need, to need it for about ten minutes rather than the usual five. Uh, I press the dough down a bit, and I think we're ready to go. It doesn't like starting up again after the rest with bagel dough. Bagel dough is the mixer killer. This dough, to give you a context, is about 52-53% hydration. Very dry, very stiff dough with very high protein flour. The uh, Altrops I'm using is very popular among bagel shops and pizza shops. It makes good products. And kills good mixers. At this point, some people who haven't gotten used to the uh, Electrolux Assistant or an Encarsum mixer yet say it's not doing anything. It's just wobbling around and the dough's not doing anything. And to those people, I tell them, just go away for five or ten minutes and when you come back, you'll be surprised at what's happened to the dough. There's a temptation to reach in and push the dough around so it'll do what you think it should be doing. It's okay. It's okay. sound out if I say too many stupid things. Oh, 
don't know. What's more exciting, this or watching paint dry? It's true. The surface sheen changes. I was really tempted to reach in and move the dough that was stuck here. And I've got a good amount of experience with the uh, Electrolux Assistant or N. Carson Mixer. But because of doing the video, I held my breath, gritted my teeth, and wanted to let it do its thing. The people who designed the mixer had a pretty good idea of what they were doing. Some people say the hook just shreds the dough. I haven't seen that. I've seen it develop dough. With a dough this thick, we can't just reach in and lift it out to get a uh, window pane test. We have to do something slightly different to get a window pane test. And once the mixture stops, we'll see where we are. Oh, it's trying to escape. It doesn't want to be in the mixer. Some people tighten this screw to keep the arm from moving. I haven't found that to be necessary or desirable. It's a good idea with the roller to keep the roller where you want it, but I like that the arm moves where it needs to be. I may be wrong. I've been wrong before, but that's my view on the matter. As you can see, the dough is coming together more and more. I'm not sure it will be done in the 10 minutes. The larger your batch of dough, quite often, the longer you need to knead. Thank you. 
Okay, it has stopped after 10 minutes of mixing. I have a feeling it's not going to pass the window pane test. The dough is a bit rougher than I would like. I can't just reach in and pull the dough like you could with a lightweight dough. So I'm going to break off a piece about the size of a golf ball. Roll it into a ball. And then gently tease it out. I'm turning it as I go, and I want it to be stretched out far enough that I can see light through it without the dough tearing. I doubt it's going to make it, but we're going to try anyway. If it doesn't make it, we'll give it another 10 minutes of kneading. Because that's how we roll. almost see through it and it's beginning to tear. So, back in it goes. I'll push it down again. Not that that's going to change things very much and give it another 10 minutes. And the dough smells really nice. I'm looking forward to this batch of dough. Uh, <sighs> Years ago there was an article in the New York Times, I think it was 1948, where they defined bagels for people who hadn't seen bagels, and they defined them as a peculiar Jewish petrified donut. And every now and then I slip up and call my bagels donuts. Anyway, we're going to let the bagels go another 10 minutes. They smell really good. I'm looking forward to this batch of bagels. That's right, we've got like a 20 minute limit or so. Despite the arm wobbling back and forth, the mixer is not moving. It's pretty well grounded where it is. If I wasn't doing the video, I'd be off in another room. Shopping for a new tripod or something. Our regular bagel tutorial covers how to shape bagels, how bagels need to be refrigerated overnight to fully develop their flavor, and how to boil them and bake them the next morning. We're not going to put that in as part of this video, but we'll just refer you to the other uh, web page articles rather than uh, bore you even further. 
we'll include a picture of the final bagels from uh, this batch. Yes, it looks like nothing's happening, but be patient. Some people become impatient and turn the mixture speed up. I haven't found that helps. This mixture is largely dependent on the friction between the dough and the walls of the mixer and the rotating bowl. If you make it go faster, it doesn't improve. This is a very nice mixer, it is not a very fast mixer. which is one of the reasons we've upgraded to a spiral mixer that we'll be putting together some videos on. However, to be fair, this costs about a third as much as the uh, spiral mixer we've upgraded to. We've got about four more minutes to go. Scraping noise is the hook hitting the side of the bowl. We could restrict the motion of the bowl to keep it from doing that. I haven't found it really hurts anything. I don't have a scratch mark on the inside of the bowl. Despite 12 years of making bread and bagels and everything else in this mixer. Uh-oh. Looks like we have a would-be refugee. Oh good. I was worried since I moved to make sure it was no longer framed correctly.
This is an absurd amount of dough to put in this mixer, but it handles it pretty darn well. Okay, let's take a look at the dough and see where we are. Why don't we roll back out the camera a bit and see what happens. <coughs> there we go. A very dense and adhesive dough. This part looks pretty nice. This part, we'll see. Definitely gluten development here. I'm checking out the dough that I'm most suspicious of. This part I think would pass any test. If it doesn't pass the test, we'll give it another 10 minutes. One of the things I tell people in our baking classes is pay attention to the dough, not the clock. Your dough will tell you when it's done being mixed. The clock just reminds you to look at it. Okay, we've got a fairly decent window pane with no real tearing. I think we're good to go. At this point, with the sourdough bagel dough, I like to let it rest for about an hour. And one of the nice things if you're only doing one batch of dough about the Ultralux or Encarsa mixer is it has a lovely bowl cover that keeps the dough from drying out and keeps your two-legged, four-legged, and flying pests out of it. So now we're going to let this sit for about an hour and then I'll make bagels the way we do in the bagel web pages. We're not going to show the rest of the process because it's already covered elsewhere, but we will show you the final bagels. Thank you.